hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Talking too much, getting these videos cranked up. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a board certified diagnostic and interventional radiologist in New Jersey. So I was browsing YouTube, and as usual, they recommend these medical videos because I'm in the medical space. And since I'm a sucker for thumbnails just as much as the next person, the 10 unbelievable medical mistakes really caught my eye. But then I refrained from clicking on it because I thought might as well make a reaction video to it if they're that unbelievable. So I have no idea what's inside, but we are going to watch it together and uh, I'll react to it and show you what I think. Should be interesting, I hope. Or it could be terrible. Let's go. All right, so like I said, I have no idea how good this is going to be, but let's just take a chance together and hopefully you don't hear the people blowing all the leaves outside of my apartment. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst mistakes ever made by doctors. Number 10, the fertility clinic used the wrong sperm. Ooh, that's bad. I wonder when they found out, after they delivered the baby? Before, I don't know what's worse. When Thomas and Nancy Andrews wanted to have a child, they turned to modern medicine for help. Their daughter was born in 2004, but unlike her Caucasian father and Hispanic mother, baby Jessica is black. Three DNA tests ultimately showed that Thomas was not Jessica's biological father. The Andrews sued both the clinic and the doctor, claiming that every time they looked at Jessica, they were reminded of the clinic's mistake. I don't know if I have words for that because that just shouldn't happen. That's, yeah, I think that's lawsuit worthy. Number nine. Removed kidney instead of gallbladder. Okay. How is this even possible? You either have acute cholecystitis or chronic cholecystitis, you remove the gallbladder, or you have an issue with your kidney. They're not like in the same area. They're completely different dissection planes and you have to access them through completely different incisions and all that stuff. So unless you just like walk in and have no idea what's happening and someone's like, hey, remove this kidney, you're like, no problem. But it's also a different surgeon. So like a urologist would remove a kidney, a surgeon, general surgeon or abdominal surgeon would remove the gallbladder. McEnany went on to remove the patient's kidney instead of her gallbladder. A pathologist discovered the error three days later. I, 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 just, I don't know if that's true. See, this is why I don't believe it. Don't believe this. If you switch to open, the incision is like this over your right upper quadrant. To get to the kidney, it's in the retroperitoneum, posterior or behind structure, and you have to access it through the side or the back. When you open up the abdomen, you see the gallbladder and the liver, you don't just see the kidney sitting there. It's like behind bowel, it's in the back of the abdomen. So I don't know if I believe this. McEnany was allowed to continue to practice, albeit under supervision. So it did happen? I don't see how that's true. I need a surgeon in the comments to see if that's even possible. Because what I know of what the surgery I've done, you know, which is minimal, that's my first year residency, but I need a surgeon in the comments to uh, talk about this. I'm, I'm confused. Number eight, unneeded double mastectomy. Imagine being a 35-year-old single mom and told that you have breast cancer. Under the advice of her doctors, Eason underwent a double mastectomy to stop the cancer in its tracks. And then it turned out she never had cancer to begin with. <sighs> this is, yeah. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes into medicine, especially diagnoses of cancer, especially breast cancer. You're dealing with tiny cancers, you biopsy them, you send it to the lab, and you assume that no one's tampering with your results. But this was not a good situation obviously. What people don't understand on the outside, the lab gets a ton of samples on a daily basis. We're talking pus, so many cancers and operations, kidneys, whole legs. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more to be honest with you, but there's obviously a very rigid structured way they classify every patient. When I take something to the lab, I haven't done it in a while, but when I used to, we used to have to have a sticker on the bottle and a sticker on the outside and like sheet of paper that shows the patient's information, all this stuff to ensure that doesn't happen, but I think once you take the sample out of the container, I mean, she basically had surgery for no reason. And that's major surgery. Number seven, drilling into the wrong side of the skull. Okay, I can see this one. Sometimes people get confused right or left, but there's things we do before any procedure that involves a different side. So in the pre-op area, you mark what side, put your initials as the doctor, you put initials on the right side, we're doing the right side, or we're doing the left side, we're doing the left side. You'll see a lot of orthopedic surgeons who come in preoperatively and put like a yes on the right leg instead of the left leg, because it's easy to, to confuse it in the OR or people who don't know the patient, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why we do these things to 
prevent stuff like this. In 2007, an 82 year old woman required surgery at Rhode Island Hospital to stop bleeding in her brain. Even though the CT scan showed that the bleeding was on the left side, the neurosurgeon started drilling burr holes on the right. I don't know why they're showing this graphic because that has nothing to do with the procedure they're talking about. They just drill a burr hole in the stroll and relieve that blood, usually from a subdural or epidural hematoma, and they drill a hole in the stroll and it allows that blood to escape and stop pressing on the brain. The same mistake was performed two more times that year, which left one elderly patient dead weeks after his surgery. Yeah, that's... One time, like, I mean, it's inexcusable, but like, okay. Three times at the same hospital? Number six, surgical tools left in patient. Classic one here. I mean, I, I feel like this is unfortunately more common than anything. Sadly, it's not that uncommon for surgical tools to be left inside of patients. After he underwent surgery in his abdomen to remove a tumor, Church returned for a CT scan, citing extreme pain. It turned out the doctors had left a 13 inch retractor inside of Church taking up the length of his trunk. I mean, for those of you who don't know, again, I'm not a surgeon, but I've been in the OR many times in my day. I think this is what we call like the malleable, I don't know the technical name for it. Surgeon, comment below. It's like the malleable retractor thing. And usually you put it in while you're closing up the peritoneum and the fascia so that you don't hit bowel while you're taking large bites with the suture. The, the suture that you use to close the abdominal wall is very, very big. So you take a big bite to make sure you oppose the abdominal wall after your big incision. And this is what you put under it so that you don't hit the actual bowel and cause an injury on your way out. You can also use it for retracting all this stuff. I can see how it'd be left behind when you're closing up the incision and it just like slips your mind to take it out. But in the OR, they do counts on everything they use. And then after the case, they count everything, sponges, needles, et cetera, et cetera. And oftentimes if the count is incorrect, what they'll do is they'll take an x-ray intraoperatively before they finish everything and see if there is a leftover needle, a sponge, something like this, obviously you would see. And uh, they call me immediately to see what I see and we read it immediately. And uh, yeah, this stuff doesn't really happen, but every now and then it will. Number five, removed wrong testicle. Ooh, that hits, that hits hard. That's no good. 47 year old Benjamin Houghton had been complaining of pain and shrinkage in his left testicle. Instead of removing the left testicle, Doctors removed the right healthy testicle. That's not good, not good. Especially if you're trying to have kids. Especially if the other testicle was atrophic or small. Maybe it wasn't working, you took out the good one, now you're left with one bad one. Number four, anesthetic awareness. The Baptist preacher was admitted to Raleigh General Hospital for exploratory surgery in 2006 and was given drugs to paralyze his muscles. But the anesthesiologists failed to give him the general anesthesia that would make him unconscious. He experienced agonizing pain. You hear about this stuff. I think they did a whole movie on it. So they give you a paralytic to calm everything down and basically you can't move any muscle in your body, but just sit there. And if they forget to give the actual anesthetic, you just sit there, you can't move or talk and you feel everything which I can only imagine is something out of a horror movie. I've heard of things like this, but they don't happen often, luckily. Constant nightmares and torment drove him to suicide less than a month after surgery and his family to sue the hospital. Dear God, come take and me take me now because I can't deal with this. Number three, an open heart invasive procedure on the wrong patient. Ooh, I don't know how you can recover from that one. There are multiple checks we do before any procedure to verify a patient's identity. Unless they had like the exact same name and birthday, that's inexcusable. And also, wasn't the patient like, why are you doing this? I always wonder that too, right? Obviously it's the fault of the medical staff, but wouldn't the patient be like, no, I'm not having my heart taken out? Wouldn't they know that? Or I guess sometimes they don't. A patient was admitted for a procedure to locate brain aneurysms, but after completing the cerebral angiography she'd been scheduled for, the patient was returned to the wrong floor. From there, a different team of doctors took the patient to perform heart surgery. Number two, removed wrong leg. Ooh, this is what we were talking about. You have to mark the right side before surgery. I've heard about stuff like this too. This may be the most widely publicized case of surgical mishaps. A series of errors, such as the wrong leg allegedly being indicated on some charts and the board in the operating room, led to the wrong leg coming off. Although Dr. Orlando Sanchez was fined and suspended, he defended his actions stating that the leg he removed was in poor shape and would have likely needed to be removed eventually. <laughs> 
I see where he's getting at, but that's bad timing. So a lot of these patients with peripheral arterial disease have both of their legs in pretty bad shape. That's pretty common. It's rare to have one leg that has a very severe disease and the other be like perfectly pristine. Usually there's disease on both sides. So it may have been something in the future they were considering amputating that leg as well, but can't really defend yourself by saying we'd eventually have to do that anyways. <laughs> he must have bad lawyers. Number one, wrong heart and lung transplant. Ooh, these transplants, how do you do that? I don't, I just don't understand. Like, cause these transplants come in overnight. You call the patient to come to the hospital. Do they call the wrong patient? Like, I'm so confused. Or was it also a transplant patient? The surgery was going smoothly until five hours in when Jaggers was informed that the donor heart and lungs were blood type A, which would be rejected by Jessica's type O blood. Soon after, the girl slipped into a coma. And while Dr. Jaggers tried to correct the mistake with a second transplant almost two weeks later, Santian died soon afterward. You know, when you have a pediatric wrongful death, I don't know, that always gets to me and that gets to a lot of people. So I'm sure that family won a pretty big case against that hospital. That's Duke Hospital, by the way. I used to live in Durham. I used to go by that hospital all the time and I never knew that. I think that officially concludes this video on these horrendous medical mistakes. Let's uh, hope none of us ever experience any of those. So if you like this video, let me know in the comments below. Smash the like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you all, of course, on the next video. Bye.